Yeah. yeah. All right, uh, let's go to probably the, the biggest negative play of the game, and that was Cam Tater Britt trying to the, the punt. The ball took a funny bounce after being a short kick, ricocheted off of his helmet, and was recovered by the Rams early in the third quarter. Um, he's the guy that you thought would be the punt, main punt returner all year long, but he's had issues in weeks one and two. Here's the head coach talking about that play from Saturday. we got to make good decisions back there. Um, I'm not the type of coach that's going to fire someone from a role if they make a mistake, uh, but the mistakes have to have to quit. The one on Saturday was a little tough. If if that's a, a bounce in, in the open field, we want him to feel it. That, w- that was probably not the right time to try to do that. Uh, but Cam gives us our best opportunity for a big play back there too. So we'll make that decision as we go forward, but I, I trust Cam. Such a goofy play. It was a goofy bounce that hit. I know what he was trying to do. He was trying to just catch it straight in the air, and then it kind of shot right at him. And then it didn't go out of bounds. It stayed right there on the sideline. where they could. I felt bad for Cam because I don't know really what he could have done other than just run away from the ball altogether. And, and it, you heard Coach say it right there. He still is the guy that's going to provide them the most opportunities for some explosive plays back there. And I just, I'm with, I'm with Coach. I mean, give him the benefit of the doubt. I know he's got to make better decisions. I think Cam knows he's got to make better decisions. But... Knowing what he, the potential that what he can do, um, you know, I, I think it's I think Cam will get get it figured out, and I don't I just don't see him making those mistakes again. Uh, I'm with you. And then the fo- there was a follow up question to the coach about Cam. It wasn't right after that answer that he gave about the pun, and just said, you know, Cam's off to a bad start. And Scott Frost kind of took a little exception to that. Listen here. I think he's had a, a rough first couple of weeks. He's played really well on defense. Um, he's he's had two bad plays. And if you look at any player on our team, they've had two bad plays in two games. Um, so I wouldn't characterize it as a rough start. Uh, we just got to make better decisions on punt return. Yeah, I think that's unfair to say that he's, yeah. it's affected his defense because it hasn't. He's been good out there. No, and and every single week we're going to see it. Like teams probably are not going to try to try to challenge Cam that much, which. Anytime you have a guy like that, that that's a lockdown corner that teams don't even want to throw to, it's, you know, bodes well for your defense. All right. Uh, Buffalo, the, the, the Bulls routed Wagner, another FCS school, in their opener. They were they played for a MAC title a year ago. This is a good program. Now, their head coach from last year, Lance Leipold, left to go take the Kansas job, and he took a handful of assistants off that team, even had some players from the Buffalo program that have left and gone and joined uh, the coaches in Lawrence, uh, but they look good in their opener. Here's the coach with his initial thoughts about the opponent coming up on Saturday. Well, their kids know how to win. Um, you know, they played in for a conference championship last year. I think they got talent. Uh, you know, I've watched their defense more than their offense. They, they've got good pass rushers, all conference linebackers, good guys up front, and, and some fast guys in the back. Um, they're very sound in their scheme, very aggressive in their scheme. Um, and they looked really well coached. They, you know, they looked like world beaters in, in game one. So um, our guys are preparing and, and know we have a challenge on Saturday. This is a game that we've even had some fans who've been kind of asking us for over the last month, what about this Buffalo team? Even though they lost a handful of players, and even though they lost their head coach, they are still they know how to win. They've got winners in that program. Yeah, and Coach also talked about that, just the, the d- challenges of preparing for Buffalo, even though, you know, we, there was a, a game on film, they were up so big that they didn't have to necessarily show everything that they, they might have to show in week one. So again, another challenge in that aspect of game planning for a team, you might not know exactly what they're going to bring at you. But I think this, you know, the players that I heard and, and spoke to today um, respect uh, the heck out of Buffalo and know it's going to be a challenge and, and they're kind of tackling this week. And again, taking it one week at a time because I think maybe a lot of fans even though, we, yes, we've had fans that have asked us about Buffalo and, and how you know, this game could be a, a game that they could provide a challenge, but still a lot of people want to talk about Oklahoma. Well, no, we got to take we got to take care of business this week first, and this team is absolutely approaching it that way. Yeah, I didn't get any sense of that from the players at all no. today. They know what, what's ahead of them on Saturday. Saturday is also going to be a very special day because it's, gonna, it's, the, uh, it's 9-11. It's the 20-year anniversary of the tragic event that, that happened to our country. And a lot of people will remember that Nebraska was the first college football game to be played after 9-11. They put a Thursday night game against Rice. In fact, BTN's got a documentary they're going to play tomorrow night about that. 
Uh, so tune into that. No, don't don't tune into that while we're on the air. You can record it and go back and watch it later. Uh, but the head coach was asked today about what does he remember about 9-11? Where was he on that day? It was a tough time for the country. I was in Berea, Ohio. Had just gotten released by the Jets and picked up off waivers by the Cleveland Browns. And I got up in the morning at a hotel to head into work and turned on the TV and and saw what what was happening. So it um, doesn't seem like it was 20 years ago. Um, you know, I'm really proud of uh, Ora Garst and, and our team and the video they put out and have gotten a lot of good messages about that. Uh, he's really talented. Um, you know, having DJX on the team and being part of that was pretty special. So uh, it's something that should be remembered and honored and um, our little token uh, the little bit we can do to help honor it is, is worth doing. There will be a lot of pageantry around all of that on Saturday at the game. It should be a really cool day. The video, and Ora Garst is the one who put together the video of the uniform reveal last week where they shot it earlier in August and got Damian Jackson involved in that, and that was a really well-done video. Oh, it was incredible, and just it across – the nation and how many views it got and how many people's lives it touched, you know, by it. It was awesome. Just very well done. And Aura will be the first to tell you it was a team that put it together. His team, Nick Burkhardt's team. There was a lot of hands that were involved in that to, to make it all go. But, yeah, the concept, the, you know, honoring. And, and I, I really like the uniforms. Are, are you going to be able to read the numbers? Though, I know. I'm it? a little worried about that because <laughs> bright sunshine on those might be a little. little I do. Nicer. I love the helmets, though. I really do. I like the NU on the helmet. Where were you on 9-11? I was in high school. Um, I remember just thinking what in the world So you were going. in school probably when it mm -hmm. started happening. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And just kind of was what's going on and didn't really know. And, yeah, it was um, – and then you kind of saw it unfold. Did they let you watch coverage during the yeah, day? Yeah, they did, yep. Uh, and I went to a really small high school. And so um, I remember they rolled out a TV, TV. and mm -hmm. we were just kind of sitting in the auditorium watching and, and – Again, not really understanding the magnitude of, of what was going on, but slowly and surely kind of start unfolding of, of what's all going on and what does this mean? And, yeah, I mean, surreal. It's kind of like what Coach said. It, it doesn't seem like it was that long ago. I was getting ready for the day. I remember running out of the bathroom and had one of the – I think it might have been NBC had the Today Show on or something, and they were like in disbelief, and you're like, what is going on here? It was a crazy, crazy time. Uh, Crypto King said he was working at a casino and everyone acted like it was no big deal, which that surprises me a little bit. I think everybody, when you're seeing planes hit the trade center, you knew it was a pretty big deal. But, um, yeah, it was just a wild time. We're going to hear a lot about this as we move through the week. Hey, our Sports Nightly Hotline's open for you, 402-413-2400. It is brought to you by the Woodhouse Auto Family. Shop Woodhouse first. 18 brands, 16 convenient locations simplified car buying to save you time shop finance and buy online at woodhouse.com again 402-413-2400 call or text also we're up and running now on our youtube chat uh, with our youtube stream of of watching the show there and our chat room is wide open as well we're back with more sports highlight coming up you could win a 2021 Ford F-150 XL four-wheel drive super crew truck from the Woodhouse Auto family this season if the Huskers return the first or second half opening kick for a touchdown, Woodhouse will give away an F-150. New contestants will be chosen each week. For details on how to enter the Woodhouse Auto Family Kickoff Contest and official rules, go to woodhousekickoff.com. That's woodhousekickoff.com. Valley 365 is here, and the time is now to take your farming technology full circle. Valley 365 is the ultimate command center, the new single sign-on platform that brings together our tried and true technology and streamlines your entire operation. Combining the best features of AgSense, Valley Scheduling, Valley VRI, and Valley Insights, Valley 365 is the next level solution for connected crop management. Leverage your data, make the most of your time, and own your tomorrow. Contact your Valley dealer today. You and your vehicles work hard for the important things in life. Trust high-quality AmeriGuard lubricants by Sap Brothers to protect engines, equipment, and your investment at an excellent value so you can save money for the things that matter more, like sending your future Husker off to college. Contact your local Sap Brothers petroleum expert for more information on AmeriGuard lubricants. www.sapbrothers.net slash petroleum. 
Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Husker Athletics. Whether you compete on the court, at the track, on the field, or in the fields, winning isn't just a goal. It's a mindset shaped, honed, and defined throughout the season. That's why farmers pushing themselves to be the best plant DeKalb brand corn. Wherever you compete, winning has roots. Perform at your best with DeKalb. Always read and follow grain marketing and all other stewardship practices and pesticide label directions. Triple B Feed has the products to help your cows thrive. Whether it's weekly delivery of consumption-controlled Lumix liquid minerals with protein or Redmond natural mineral salt for livestock or humans, Triple B has you covered. Let Brian and Brad Blahorn take some of the stress out of your beef production this year. For more information and other products, visit TripleBFeed.com. Triple B Feed, helping you and your cattle. Hey, this is Jimmy Buffett. I am so happy to be bringing my Broadway musical, Escape to Margaritaville, to you. It's got all the songs you know by heart, a few new ones, a great cast, and dancing that'll knock your flip-flops off. Get ready to set your mind on island time and get your tickets today. Fins up. At the Lead Center, September 10th through 12th. Get your tickets today at leadcenter.org. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. From sprains and stitches to sore throats and sinus infections, when it's care that can't wait, count on CHI Health Clinic Priority Care. Simply walk in seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. You'll get the quality care you need without an appointment and you'll never pay more than a regular primary care visit. Get in, get out, and get on with your day. Find a location near you at chihealth.com slash priority care. Did you know that cigarette butts make up a large portion of microplastics in the ocean, which end up in 70% of seabirds and 30% of sea turtles? Bank of the West is helping to solve this problem by not financing big tobacco. Proving that what a bank chooses not to finance can be just as important as what it does. Learn more about what we do and don't finance at bankofthewest.com slash change. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Woohoo! Business technology one, network downtime zero. Being a game-winning IT network takes hard work and an experienced technology coach. That's why our game plan includes Marco. Marco helps our entire business infrastructure perform better and score big day in and day out. With Marco's veteran experience guiding our team, every season is a winning season. Find out what your technology could be saying at marconet.com. Did you ever buy something and get more, more than you expected? Emeritus offers insurance, employee benefits, and financial services, but we deliver so much more. The comfort of a human voice when you need it the confidence of flashing a beautiful smile, the relief that your family can keep living the life they love, the serenity of knowing you've planned well and can enjoy life. That's what we really deliver. We call it fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services, and much more. Treatment for kids fighting brain cancer has not changed for over 30 years. If a child survives, they will live with the side effects from the treatments for the rest of their lives. This is Rex Burkhead. The Team Jack Foundation invests in impactful childhood brain cancer research to find better treatments and one day a cure. There's a lot of work to do to beat this disease, and we need your help. Donate today by calling 855-RUN-JACK or by visiting teamjackfoundation.org. Your help makes a difference. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is the place to watch Nebraska games this season. Locally owned and operated, Addy's is Omaha's premier sports bar with four locations in Elkhorn, Maple Street, Millard, and the new flagship Capital location in downtown Omaha. If it's Husker game day, it's on at Addy's. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is Omaha's official watch party spot with game day giveaways, prizes, fun, and more surprises later in the season. Addy Sports Bar and Grill. See you there for the game. We're back on our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres Equipment, Nebraska's premier John Deere dealer with 27 locations across Nebraska and into Kansas. Acres Solutions for every field. 402-413-2400, the number to dial us up with a comment or question or fire off a text. 
I know a lot of you are probably still uh, packing up your lake gear from the holiday weekend and maybe doing a last-second barbecue before you get back and settle into the work week. We're here, though. We're working for you to make you feel better. <laughs> I know. I think a you lot took of naps. You had. You're good. You're cut off. Oh, your sleep. I slept almost all day yesterday. <laughs> I did hit a lake yesterday, so I had a great time. Uh, Jim in Columbus on our text line. Basically, uh, he says, "I Martinez, I think, was making quicker decisions, maybe because he had more time than last week. That's probably fair. Thought he was more ready to run when his receivers recovered. That's when I want him to see him take off. Is when it's not there and you need seven or eight yards, go get it and keep the drive alive. It had a couple of offensive linemen right out, or at least." One out. The, Brock Bando yep. is not in uniform. So yep. I think, too, and again, this is a conversation I've had a lot with Jeremiah, but just the chemistry that it, it, it takes to build with an offensive line. Nice. It just takes time, and it takes reps, and you, it just doesn't happen at the drop of a hat. So the more you get out there and play together and get a feel for the guys that are you know beside you, it's just going to continue to grow. And you got some young guys. Yes, they have some experience, but there's still, you got some young players out there on the O line. So I think the more you continue to grow each time out there, I think they're going to continue to take steps. I think in a month from now, we're going to go, wow, that line's pretty good. Yeah. It, it's going to be some growing pains making our way through this. So just be a little bit more patient with that group. Um, and I know sometimes that's hard. And what people forget, we had two four-year starters who left and are now in the NFL. One's that, about to start on right, Thursday, right? for the right? Cowboys, and I think Hymas is going to start for the Chargers. So you've got two guys that are going to start in the NFL in year one that are not here. So that's a lot of experience that we had to replace. It just takes some time to build up those offensive lines and some young guys. I, I think they're going to be just fine. On the flip side of that, the defensive line, you got Casey Rogers that they're able to bring back slowly. That's huge. Yeah. That you don't have to rush, rush him, him back because they have so much depth. You can take your time and make sure he's good to go. I think he probably will be good to go for Oklahoma, which will be a big get. Sure, sure would be. Let's go to the phones up to Omaha. Monty, you're up tonight. Good evening. Monty, do we have you? Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Oh, oh! I think he hung up on us. Monty calls back. We'll get you, move you in there, and uh, get you connected to us there. Um, time to tell you that Nebraska eight one one says go dig red before you dig. Call it or click eight one one to have your utility lines marked. It's free, it's easy, and it's the law. We need to take our final break of the hour. Still time if you want to be a part of it. Four zero two four one three twenty four hundred. We're back with more sports nightly coming up. Want to get all the latest Husker news straight to your phone? Need to be the first of your friends to get the scoop on all things Huskers? Sign up for text alerts from Nebraska Athletics. Text Huskers to 83200 to get game time notifications and updates, breaking news, special ticket offers, and more straight to your phone. All the Husker news is just a quick text away. Just text Huskers to 83200. Standard text messaging rates apply and may vary by carrier. Nebraskans are choosing chiropractic for better health. Why chiropractic? Because it is safe, drug-free, and a cost-effective treatment option for back and joint pain. Plus, all generations can benefit from natural chiropractic care. Choose chiropractic first for pain relief, nutrition, or to improve your mobility, athletic performance, or overall wellness. Make chiropractic your first choice for better health. Find a chiropractic physician near you at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Get your life back with chiropractic. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm journalism student Grace Fitzgibbon with Campus News. A new grant from the U.S. Department of Agriculture is supporting Husker research in the study of multi-robot systems in ag settings. The almost half a million dollar grant was awarded through the USDA's National Institute of Food and Agriculture to Professor Santosh Pitla. Pitla and his team will use the funds to further their research in the use of unmanned ground vehicles and drones on the farm. It's football season. Husker Nation and Famous Dave's is here to make your tailgate, house party, or get-together famous. Award-winning and house-smoked St. Louis-style ribs, Texas beef brisket, Georgia chopped pork, and house-made sides like our Wilbur beans, creamy coleslaw, and Dave's cheesy mac and cheese will surely tackle any barbecue craving. Visit FamousDave's.com for all your catering and online ordering needs or come visit us at our locations in Lincoln and Bellevue. Get us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. 
Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall at Zone 6 in Exarban Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Row townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. Hey, Husker fans, if you're looking for an exciting new career as part of your pandemic recovery, Iowa has over 75,000 job openings in industries such as healthcare, advanced manufacturing, construction, IT, and ag. IowaWorks.gov has more information about job openings, earn while you learn apprenticeships, and exciting training and scholarship opportunities. Find your next great job in Iowa. They've got a solid game plan, a bright future, and want you on their team. www.iowaworks.gov. September is Childhood Cancer Awareness Month, and the Team Jack Foundation raises funds for childhood brain cancer research. Please consider supporting the Team Jack Foundation by texting Jack to 243-725 or visiting teamjackfoundation.org. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you here on a Monday night. Back on our text line, uh, the O-line between tackle and tackle, not one senior on that line, one junior in the offensive line has a couple of sophomores and some freshmen, redshirt freshmen. In two years, those guys are going to be juniors and seniors and look out. I, I, I totally agree. That's exactly right. It goes back to what you were saying. And one thing I meant to say after you were talking about the O-line, the snaps were good on Saturday. Yeah. I mean, just confidence continues to build with each game. And look, I, I, I understand that Fordham talent-wise uh, doesn't match up with, with the roster that Nebraska has out there. But still, just it's just huge to walk off the field with a win and, and do a lot of the things that – you worked on all week that you wanted to improve on and and you know with each week and someone just texted it in with each week you get more confidence with every win your, your confidence grows so you got to keep stringing those together week by week dennis on our text line says on the kickoffs fair catch or let it go in the end zone or possibly run it out of the end zone since it goes to the 25 yard line matt's been a big believer that in a lot of kind you're just as well off waving for the fair catch Get, know you get the ball at the 25 instead of trying to bring it out from the goal line and getting tackled at the 15 or 16 yard line. You've lost nine yards. Being a punt returner, a kickoff returner, a returner, that's a hard job. There's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of things you have to work through in your mind in a very short time. Then people running at you, the crowd, all these kinds of things that it, there's a reason why not everybody can do it that right. you don't put you certain guys you think well why aren't they back there well you have to be a good decision maker you have to you know think quickly and, and it's just a lot to kind of process through I would not want that job I wouldn't either one of the I think biggest positives has been Nebraska's kickoff guys they've just every kickoff Saturday was out through the back of the end zone touchbacks that's a huge improvement for where Nebraska was 12 months ago. What a massive weapon. Just doesn't even allow for a team to do anything because as we've seen so many times across college football, a big play, a big return can really swing a momentum, like big time. I mean, a punt return, a kickoff return, you flip the field. I mean, it just could be a massive turn of events, change of momentum. So the fact that you're not even giving them a chance yeah. on kickoff return to even you know make anything happen on the positive front, Massive weapon. Totally, totally agree. Brandon, Frankie, and then this week, Kellen Meyer kicked off a few. The young man, the walk-on from Ord, and all of them knocked it out of there. And we've seen it around here the last couple of years. Nebraska has been giving up big returns. That looks like that has been totally solved in the offseason. So that's a, a real positive. want to get your take on a couple of uh, college football coaches that maybe stepped in it. Maybe not. Depends on where you come down on this. Ed Orgeron. Uh, great game with LSU and UCLA the other night. UCLA's pretty good. Chip Kelly's got that thing cranked up and going. Um, as they, they were walking in, Ed Orgeron, who was an interim head coach at USC, so he knows a little bit about that rivalry with USC UCLA. Talked about uh, well, you're wearing some. He was getting heckled by a UCLA fan, and he said something about your sissy blue color uniforms. That bother you at all? I mean, Ed O needs to take some PR training. He, how many times <laughs> has he said something that you're like, oh, I mean, like. You even have to question what he said about, oh, we've been paying our players in the summer. Yeah. He said that, you know, like how many times has he made a comment where you're like, oh, maybe you shouldn't have said that or maybe you should think about what you said. But I no, I mean, it doesn't bother doesn't me. doesn't bother you. And then last night, Notre Dame 
coughed up a big lead, ended up winning in overtime over Florida State after the game. Their coach, Brian Kelly, was asked about, what did you think of your team's execution? And he goes, execution, I'm all for it. I might just execute my whole team. That was a quote that John McKay gave back in the 70s. Uh, So he was repeating that. That blew up for a while. People were all over that thing. I knew what it was from, so I didn't really care about it. Again, I think we're just so sensitive about all this stuff anymore. You really like Mina Kimes, and she had a, uh-huh. she put out a tweet about this. This Brian Kelly thing is just peak 2021 stuff. Bunch of people mad about the possibility of other people being mad. Few, Very few people are actually mad. Everything is cultural war. It's also boring. But it, it just She's continues. Right. Everything just continues to right. blow up. Everybody's like, oh, that's a, that's a bad thing. You can't say that. And they want to just make it a big, big deal. Probably shouldn't have said it, but I think he was trying to be funny. It just didn't come off very well. I think he was very relieved that they got out of there with a win, and that that win will be good for the Irish as they move through their year. Let's try Monty in Omaha again. Good evening, Monty. Hey, how you guys doing? Hey, Monty, good. How are you? Good, good. I see, uh, Greg, I, I see you got a different partner tonight, huh? Jessica's been with me for the last couple months. Oh, okay, okay, okay. You don't have Ben Ben McLaughlin no, no he's, more. He's just doing stuff on football pregame and postgame. Okay, okay. Hey, um, I started a defense for the. Uh, I started a defense. Really played the guts out. Um, and a defense is going to be the main focus this year on the game. Uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned. And I don't know. I mean, our offense is going to be good, too, but it's just going to take a while for it to get where it should be. Very good. Monty, I'm up against the, the hard out at the end of the hour. You're right, that defense, and I, I mentioned this on the broadcast Saturday, they gave up 295 yards to Fordham. That makes six straight games. Nebraska's defense has not allowed their opponent to get over 400 yards of offense. And in this day and age of college football where everybody's moving the ball up and down the field, six straight, five of those coming against Big Ten teams. That was impressive. I thought Eric Chander's team, once they gave up that first drive, really locked it in and uh, got, got busy against that Fordham offense. Hey, buckle up and put the phone down. A reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. One hour in the books. We're going to hear from Matt Davis the next hour. We'll hear from Ben Stilley. More of your calls, comments about Saturday's game. All that coming up on the other side. Come on back. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Treatment for kids fighting brain cancer has not changed for over 30 years. If a child survives, they will live with the side effects from the treatments for the rest of their lives. This is Rex Burkhead. The Team Jack Foundation invests in impactful childhood brain cancer research to find better treatments and one day a cure. There's a lot of work to do to beat this disease, and we need your help. Donate today by calling 855-RUN-JACK or by visiting teamjackfoundation.org. Your help makes a difference. Addy's Sports Bar and Grill is the place to watch Nebraska games this season. Locally owned and operated, Addy's is Omaha's premier sports bar with four locations in Elkhorn, Maple Street, Millard, and the new flagship Capital location in downtown Omaha. If it's Husker game day, it's on at Addy's. Addy's Sports Bar and Grill is Omaha's official watch party spot with game day giveaways, prizes, fun, and more surprises later in the season. Addy's Sports Bar and Grill, See you there for the game. It's football season. Husker Nation and Famous Dave's is here to make your tailgate, house party, or get-together famous. Award-winning and house-smoked St. Louis-style ribs, Texas beef brisket, Georgia chopped pork, and house-made sides like our Wilbur beans, creamy coleslaw, and Dave's cheesy mac and cheese will surely tackle any barbecue craving. Visit FamousDave's.com for all your catering and online ordering needs or come visit us at our locations in Lincoln and Bellevue. Great job, everyone. Printers, great coverage. Phones, quick pickups. Firewall, tough defense. And network, way to carry the whole team. Ever since Marco started calling our technology plays, we work smarter and our whole game is more streamlined. Marco's all-star services and support give us the winning edge. Find out what your technology could be saying at marconet.com.
For the Huskers Radio Network inside the Acres Broadcast Center, I'm Tim Mulhelpt, and this is your sports ticker. Coming off his team's impressive 52-7 win over Fordham this weekend, Scott Frost spoke to the media this morning and praised the veteran talent his program has acquired. Yeah, and you know, you're just more ready for everything that life and football throw at you when you're 21 years old instead of 18. I'm sure it helps those guys to have some peers that are, are new to the program too, but um, every one of those guys that transferred in did a great job of being mature and getting to work, um, training like a pro and learning the offense and defensive and special team schemes. So um, I think we picked some of the right guys and they're going to they're gonna play a big role this year. Big Red's big weekend wasn't limited to football as across the board the Huskers thrived. Yesterday, women's soccer blanked Loyola Chicago 3 to nothing, improving to 4-2 and two on the season. Volleyball jumped up to the number three rank in the country following a 3-0 weekend, improving to 5-0 and overall. Senior middle blocker Kayla Caffey was named Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week after averaging 1.56 blocks and 2.44 kills per set to go along with a 4.05 hitting percentage. The Huskers will take on number 19 Creighton at 6.30 p.m. in Omaha this Wednesday. Day. Elsewhere in college sports, in both a college football and a human interest story, one with an indirect connection to the Huskers, Mackenzie Milton, a quarterback for Florida State, returned to the gridiron last night, three years removed from a gruesome knee injury that threatened his career. The signal caller rallied the Seminoles from a 10-point down deficit in the fourth quarter to force overtime before Notre Dame eked out the win. Milton was a former quarterback for Scott Frost in his time with the University of Central Florida. Across the world, the sports baseball is already underway. The Blue Jays topped the Yankees 8 to nothing. The Royals bested the Orioles 3 to 2. The Nationals beat the Mets 4 to 3. The Rays eked out a wild 11 to 10 win over the Red Sox in extras. The Pirates beat the Tigers 6 to 3, and the Phillies crushed the Brewers 12 to nothing. The Cubs bested the Reds 4 to 3. The Dodgers beat the Cardinals 5 to 1. The Giants are currently in the process of smacking the Rockies 10 to 5, and the Twins are up over the Indians 3 nothing with the Astros just breaking it open and the early going against the Mariners 5 nothing. Later on tonight, the Rangers will take on the Angels at 8.07 p.m. Central. Those are today's headlines. I'm Tim Mulhelpt. Live inside Memorial Stadium, this is the Huskers Radio Network. Rolling to the right side as DeMorat being pressured, throws downfield, passes intercepted, picked off by the Cornhuskers. It's Deontay Williams, second pick of the day, third turnover forced by the Blackshirts, and Nebraska will take over. Third and five from the seven. Pistol set, two wide outs left, Lever to the near side. In motion is two ray, snap back, turn, run the option of the near side. Avery pitches it back to some more to the five. He is in. Touchdown, Nebraska. It's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who reminds you to buckle up and put the phone down. Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cootie on the Huskers Radio Network. Thank you. Welcome back. Hour number two here of Sports Honey on a Labor Day, the final official summer weekend of the year. Now we're going to get into fall. You're going to get into cinnamon spice and all those fun things and sweaters. Pull those out of the out of the closet at some point in time. You, you like sweaters, turtlenecks, that type oh, of thing? Oh, yeah. Boots and boots and sweaters is yeah. my favorite, yeah. but We're close. I, I thought Saturday felt a little fallish in the morning. It did. Kind of was a little teaser, but it felt like we were getting, you know, in the middle of summer and fall. It kind of was a little early feel of it. Yep. I think it's going to be warmer this Saturday than it was last Saturday, but uh, that's fine. Uh, that'll be good. 2.30 would be fun to have a 2.30 kickoff. Everybody can tailgate during the middle of the day and then get back after when the game gets over. All right, coming up this hour, Matt Davis. It'll be here to our Mondays with Matt segment coming up here in just a couple of minutes. We'll hear from Ben Stilley, one of the black shirts, one of those super seniors who played really well on Saturday as the Huskers held Fordham to under 300 yards of offense and only seven points in that game. We'll also keep some time open for you to be a part of this one at 402-413-2400 with a call or a text. Uh, we do have college football underway. Ole Miss Louisville just kicked off. No Lane Kiffin. He tested positive for COVID, so he is not on the sidelines for the Rebels for that game tonight. But Mondays means Matt Davis and our color analyst joins us to talk about Saturday's game. This one uh, felt pretty good. A lot, lot better jump in the step with the guys after winning the way they did and getting to play so many fellas. Our Mondays with Matt segment here on Sports Nightly and a little different feel around the building today. A little mm-hmm. bit of jump in everybody's step. Yeah, it's always nice to win, and, and the guys did it in, in pretty good fashion. You know, anytime you win a game by that margin, I think you have to take a lot of positives out of it, and, and I think our team should from that game. 
Um, maybe a slow start, but sometimes you see that in those games. You know, the, you know they have good players too, and they came out and gave great effort early on. They had some good schemes offensively. They go down and get a touchdown and and uh, stopped us, at, uh, you know, early and and. But the guys eventually wore them out, and I think that's what you see in these games a lot of times. And then you know, once we were able to control the line of scrimmage and and ended up running for 300 yards and and uh, doing some good things and and defensively really shut them down in the second half. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of good things to take out of that. Winning is never easy. I don't care who you play. And so, you know, you enjoy it for a day, then you move on. And yesterday was prep, and today's practice was really good. A back over 100, a wide receiver over 100, and they both are come from the transfer portal. Maybe kind of a sign of where things are going in college football. Yeah, I mean, we knew both those guys were talented. Uh, Samari is, is just a, a really good player. You know, he knows how to get open. He makes great catches, good runner after he catches it. Um, and Step had some good opportunities in the game. He he ran hard uh, when he had to run into contact, and then he had some holes. The offensive line really did a good job on on some plays where he was in the game, and and he took advantage of it. So, um, you know, there was those two guys had good get, good days in the stat sheet, uh, but a bunch of guys played really well Saturday. Good mix, right? Over 300 on the ground and through the air. You like that? Yeah, and overall took care of the ball, too. I mean, Adrian had a really solid day. Completion percentage was really high. Protected the football. Had the one early fumble, which was a fluke deal on a, on a naked bootleg. Um, but we were able to get back on it, thankfully. Uh, but he, he took care of the ball for the most part during the day and, and made good decisions. And uh, that's what we have to have out of that position. And, and he knows that. And he had a really solid day Saturday. we got to have it for, you know, 10 more weeks. And, and I think he's going to have a tremendous season. Um, so, yeah, there's, uh, you know, a lot of good things to take out of that one. It's a perfect storm because it was an easy win. Got to play a lot of players. Uh, Logan Smothers got over a quarter of action. What did you make of his first, his debut in the it's, just, it's great to get him in the game. You know, you're just one play away from having to play a, a different quarterback. We've been in that position, you know, seemingly every year uh, in the last few years where somebody gets dinged up and you got to bring a guy in. So it was really tremendous value there to get him in and get him snaps in the game. Uh, he's a quick decision maker. He understands the offense really well. Uh, he can really run. And so he did a lot of good things. Just ha taking live snaps in a game, you can't replace it with any sort of practice, practice experience, really. And so, you know, not just him, but a lot of other guys that were able to get a lot of quality snaps. You, you, unfortunately, in this game, you're going to have injuries and you're going to have to have guys that come in and, and fill gaps for a week or two or maybe the rest of the season. And so it's nice to have a game like this where you took care of business, get a, get a bunch of guys in the game. I think the folks finally got to see how deep your running back room is. I mean, Yant ran hard. Ramirez had a couple of good carries. Marvin Scott did some good things. I mean, that's going way down the chart yeah. for that, that group. Yeah, there's at least, you know, maybe half a dozen guys there that you feel comfortable putting into the game. And, and um, it creates great competition in practice. And, and so, you know, that, that room has to come to work every day in practice and in the film room. And prepare. And Coach Held is going to play the guys that are the most prepared and doing the right things. And and for the most part, they all played pretty well Saturday. So, you know, I don't know if anybody moved ahead or behind anybody, but it's nice to know you have four, five, six guys there. You feel comfortable that they get into the game, they know what they're doing, and, and can make plays for you. So our Mondays with Matt segment here on Sports Night, talking with the color analyst of the Husker Radio Network. Let's talk defense. Um, only seven points allowed, under 300 yards of offense given up. What was your evaluation of that group? Well, you said during the game it was the sixth uh, straight game we haven't given up 400 yards, and the other five were against Big Ten teams. So, you know, this defense has really found a groove. Um, they they obviously gave up a drive early in the game, and everybody was really concerned. And, and I'm not going to say I wasn't concerned, too, but, you know, Every team has good players. I don't care if it's FCS or, or Division One or, or a Power Five or not team. You know, every team has players that can make plays. And, and they had a good quarterback, a couple good backs, uh, a couple good wide receivers, and they went down the field and put points on the board. But after that, you know, our guys really settled in. You know, we want to get takeaways. They were able to do that. Um, and in the second half, they really shut them down. And they were putting a pickle in the, the first drive of the second half. They get a three and out. We fumble the punt return. They have to go right back out there. That's never easy. They get another stop. So this is a veteran group. It, it's, it, 
at certain positions on defense at least there's there's guys on the front line that have great experience there's linebackers that have played a lot of football and there's guys in the secondary that played a lot of football so you know there's uh there's good experience over there those guys know how to deal with those quick transitions in a game and momentum shifts and uh, so I thought they did a good job on Saturday. You talked about Fordham having good players. You have now called a game where somebody had 30 tackles. How amazing was that young guy? Um, man, I, I don't care who you are or what level. You make 30 tackles in any football game, and, and you're a man. You know, high school, college, pro. Um, that kid, I give him so much credit. He He's tough. He was a, a missile running to the football. He got off blocks, and when he got to the play, he made it. So, you know, he's a tremendous player and could probably play for about anybody. So he just happens to play for Fordham, and he came in here, and it's probably a game he and most of his teammates will never forget playing in front of that crowd. And to have an historic game like he had making that many tackles, you know, for sure he's going to remember this the rest of his life. And so I just give him uh, standing O, man. He was, he was tough and did a great job. It's right there with Cleet Pillen who had 30 tackles back in the 70s. I don't know anybody tougher than Cleet Pillen. So, you know, if this <laughs> if he's in the category with Cleet, he's in good company um, because, you know, Cleet, I think, had, you know, the top individual performances on defense in school history. So was a great player and, and, and an unbelievable guy. So, yeah, it was, it was crazy. It was all of a sudden he had, like, 20 tackles. And I looked down at the stat sheet. I'm like, man, this dude has 20 tackles, and he's still got 10 more. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is a great game for him. You mentioned the crowd. Uh, what, was that, what was that like for you, to see the place full again? Well, every time you and I stand up there, we kind of get the goosebumps, and, and you kind of pinch yourself. And, um, you know, so I, I don't know that I've ever taken it for granted, right? I mean, I, I'm from a little farm town, and, and I feel fortunate every day I come to work, and I've been doing the games for 18 years. So, I, I, you know, I've always, you know, really enjoyed it every time. But when it's taken away from you for a year and you don't have fans in the stands, you don't get to enjoy the excitement of what a crowd brings to sporting events, it really makes you appreciate it even more. And this stadium, and for us, uh, man, as a state, it just, I think, made everybody feel like, you know, life, uh, you're getting a little bit more back to normal. And that, uh, you know, it's one of the great things all of us can enjoy together and and not pay attention to what's going on in the news and politics and different stuff in your life. It's kind of an escape where you're all together rooting for one cause, uh, and that's to help your home team. And that's what we got to experience again on Saturday. And, and so it's an unbelievable feeling uh, for our players, for our staff, um, for our fans themselves to be with all their friends, people that have sat together for 40 years in the same seats in the same section that they get to see seven times a year and they saw those folks again. So there's just so many, you know, cool tailgating parties and, and, and relationships that have been built around Nebraska football to have this stadium full again was, was awesome for our state. Very good. Well, all that was 48 hours ago. It's turned the page time, right? This is not a bad Buffalo team coming here this weekend. No, I think they're a good team. I think they're a really good team. I think they're well coached. Um, it's going to be a big challenge. You know, our team has to prepare well. I think they know that. Uh, every week you see upsets across college football. We saw it this weekend. And, and um, you, you just you have to prepare every week the same. And you have to have consistency. And you have to have leadership within your locker room that makes sure that you show up every week and prepare the way you have to prepare. Monday through Wednesday is big prep days. And Thursday and Friday, you're fine-tuning things and, and really getting everybody focused and recovered and, and ready to perform. So I thought it was a great start to the week this morning in talking to some of the coaches from practice. And, and so hopefully they continue that the next couple of days. But it's a big challenge Saturday. We're going to need the home fans as they show up every week. and and uh, give us a boost because it's going to be a big game. You get to sleep in a little longer Saturday. We don't kick this one till 2.30. Yeah. I, I like 2.30 games. I do, too. You know, it's right in the middle of the day, and maybe some people don't like it. I actually kind of like it. I think it's uh, good timing for a game. I don't mind getting up and playing those 11 a.m.ers, though. It's kind of nice. So, uh, you know, it's going to be great. Our fans will have a little more time to tailgate beforehand <laughs> and, and uh, get into their seats a little bit earlier maybe and, and give our team a boost. It's going to be a big day. Very good. All right, we'll have a great week. We'll see you in the booth on Saturday. All right, thanks, Greg. There he is, Matt Davison, joining us as he does each Monday with our Mondays with Matt. Look back at the game, getting ready for Buffalo coming up here on Saturday.
Our Sports Nightly Hotline. It's brought to you by the Woodhouse Auto Family Shop. Woodhouse First, 18 brands, 16 locations. Simplified car buying to save you time, shop finance, and buy it online at woodhouse.com. All right, phone lines are open, 402-413-2400. Call or text. We're back with some more reaction from Saturday's game, and we're going to hear from Blackshirt Ben Silly. All that coming up next. If you're driven by an adventurous heart, you're in luck. The 2021 Subaru Outback shares your spirit. It will take you as far as you want to explore with standard symmetrical all-wheel drive. It'll get you off the beaten path with 8.7 inches of ground clearance, more than Toyota RAV4 or Honda Passport. It's the best Outback ever. The 2021 Subaru Outback. Go where love takes you. Comparison based on competitor information from manufacturer websites as of July 2020. Visit Beardmore Subaru in Bellevue or at BeardmoreSubaru.com. Welcome to Ag Answers, where we answer common questions related to farming and ranching. Today's topic, animal agriculture. There's been a lot of talk suggesting that giving up meat is good for the environment. However, livestock emissions only account for less than 4% of greenhouse gas emissions, according to the Environmental Protection Agency. Also, by reducing meat in your diet, you're missing out on all sorts of beneficial nutrients like protein, iron, and zinc. This message is brought to you by Nebraska's corn and soybean farmers. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm journalism student Grace Fitzgibbon with Campus News. With a combination of strong academics and affordability, UNL offers an excellent educational value. This year, the university was named one of the Princeton Review's best value colleges. And the new Nebraska Promise and Career Scholarship programs are connecting more hardworking Huskers with financial help so they can pursue their dreams. Husker fans, stay up to date with the most current and latest news by following the Big Red on Facebook and Twitter. These social media homes provide the fastest daily updates on everything surrounding NU athletics, including game results, ticket promotions, and Husker prizes. Log on to also follow several sports-specific pages and Husker head coaches. Become a fan today at Facebook.com slash Huskers and Twitter.com slash Huskers to join and interact with thousands of Husker fans around the world. The Nebraska FFA is growing leaders and building communities. Together, we are strengthening agriculture. The Nebraska FFA Foundation believes in our future leaders and the communities they serve. We believe in the future of agriculture. Join us in the I Believe in the Future of Ag campaign. Learn more at nefafoundation.org. Brought to you by Aurora Cooperative. Tougher together, Aurora and you. And Frontier Cooperative. There is no place like Nebraska. And there's no place that treats you like your home, like Sap Brothers. For 50 years, Sap Brothers has fueled America's heartland and been a reliable partner to local farms and Husker fans across Nebraska. Providing the highest quality fuel, lubricants, and propane, servicing your farm equipment, and welcoming guests into their travel centers. Visit www.sapbrothers.net. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Husker Athletics. Get us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. It's football season. Husker Nation and Famous Daves is here to make your tailgate, house party, or get-together famous. Award-winning and house-smoked St. Louis-style ribs. Texas beef brisket. Georgia chopped pork, and house-made sides like our Wilbur beans, creamy coleslaw, and Dave's cheesy mac and cheese will surely tackle any barbecue craving. Visit FamousDave's.com for all your catering and online ordering needs, or come visit us at our locations in Lincoln and Bellevue. Did you know that cigarette butts make up a large portion of microplastics in the ocean, which end up in 70% of seabirds and 30% of sea turtles? Bank of the West is helping to solve this problem by not financing big tobacco, proving that what a bank chooses not to finance can be just as important as what it does. Learn more about what we do and don't finance at bankofthewest.com slash change. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Treatment for kids fighting brain cancer has not changed for over 30 years. If a child survives, they will live with the side effects from the treatments for the rest of their lives. This is Rex Burkhead. The Team Jack Foundation invests in impactful childhood brain cancer research to find better treatments and one day a cure. There's a lot of work to do to beat this disease, and we need your help. 
Donate today by calling 855-RUN-JACK or by visiting teamjackfoundation.org. Your help makes a difference. It's game on at Sid Dillon Buick GMC Cadillac in Fremont. Featuring our winning combination of Buick SUVs and GMC trucks and SUVs. And as a GMC business elite dealer, we offer commercial vehicles for your business needs. For the convenient and easy way to shop for your next vehicle, just visit our Fremont location. Or check out our full inventory at SidDillonBuickGMC.com. We are professional grade. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall and Zone 6 in Exarban Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Road townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is the place to watch Nebraska games this season. Locally owned and operated, Addy's is Omaha's premier sports bar with four locations in Elkhorn, Maple Street, Millard, and the new flagship Capital location in downtown Omaha. If it's Husker game day, it's on at Addy's. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is Omaha's official watch party spot with game day giveaways, prizes, fun, and more surprises later in the season. Addy Sports Bar and Grill. See you there for the game. Welcome back inside of our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres Equipment, Nebraska's premier John Deere dealer with 27 locations across Nebraska and into Kansas Acres Solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootey with you here on a Monday night following a Husker victory today on our text line. Al wants to know, do you think the Husker offensive line will be able to push the Buffalo defense around? I don't know. We'll see. I, I don't think it's going to be as big a discrepancy as Fordham, but I, I, I don't know that Buffalo would have as good a front as Illinois did. So it's probably kind of in between those two. Yeah, for guess. sure. I mean, and that's, I was talking with the, uh, Jeremiah and Andrew about this today, just the fact that the way that the schedule is built, it kind of works out in their favor that you kind of build up a little bit. You know, yes, the talent, mm -hmm. Nebraska still should out-talent Buffalo, but the fact that Buffalo is a little bit more talented then um, Fordham gives you another good test to take another step up. I would think so, too, and, and that's that's what you want. You want to build on what you did last week and, and keep this thing rolling and uh, get get this season launched better than what we've had here in the past. Those super seniors, six of them, all had an impact on Saturday's game. You had Deontay Williams have two picks. Markel Dismuke blocked a punt. JoJo Doman had an interception. Ben Silly did some good things, and you had a chance to catch up with him today. Yeah, and a lot of the questions that we've been talking about, the touchdown that was scored and then just the depth, uh, got a chance to visit with him about all that. My first time interviewing uh, Ben Stilley, so I uh, got a chance to talk with him today at the luncheon. All right, well, how did that one feel on Saturday to get to celebrate with your guys in the locker room? Yeah, definitely good. Uh, um, obviously, get one in the win column, um, and you know, um, get get started on the on the right foot here, and you know, leading to the rest of the season. After Fordham scored the first touchdown, you guys really locked in. What kind of changed uh, after that for the defense? Yeah, I don't know that a uh, that a lot changed. Um, you know, they were kind of throwing some things at us um, that we weren't necessarily um, expecting, and so um, it took some settling into that. But a lot of it was, you know, it was us, um, you know, being out of gaps and, and not being. And, uh, you know, locked in on detailed things. Um, so really, it was us just focusing on ourselves and improving. So how was the Monday practice following the win? Yeah, without a doubt, um, good energy. Um, definitely good focus on uh, attention to all the details. It's not quite as intense um, coming off of, you know, a, a Saturday game. Monday isn't. Um, it's more about um, installing the scheme and, and getting ready. Overall, after you dove into the film from Saturday and, and watching this defense less than 300 yards that you guys gave up, how did you feel like the defense performed overall? Yeah, uh, I mean, I think it was it was definitely it was good, like you said, once we um, got past their first score there. Um, but yeah, definitely some explosive runs in there that we needed to we needed to eliminate more up to our standard. We've heard uh, oh, so much about the depth on the D line leading up to the season uh, through two games overall. How much has that paid dividends to have so many guys that can run in there and kind of keep up the, the tone that you guys set? Yeah, without a doubt, um, we, have, we have a good feel, good rotation, uh, a lot of guys that have uh, taken reps, um, and I think it will definitely pay off going down the, down the stretch here. 
In talking with JoJo and, and after the game, he, he talked about the defensive line. Usually when it's you're getting interceptions, it's the defensive line causing pressure. When it's sacks, it's a lot of times a good coverage in the back. So how much pride did you guys take in, in those three interceptions that, that the defense was able to get? Yeah, uh, it definitely goes hand in hand. Um, both position groups know that um, and, and work together in that. Uh, I, I think there, at least on two of them, I know there was pressures on two of those interceptions. And so um, guys in the back end know that. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's good to be able to work together like that. And with three takeaways, how much can you guys build on that? Obviously, it can be a huge game changer moving forward. Yeah, without a doubt. Um, there's a lot of uh, a lot of good guys for us in the back end. Um, we have a lot of belief in them, a lot of confidence in them that they're going to get picks um, and try to try to help them out up front and get a few more fumbles for them. And how? What have you seen out of Buffalo? Have you guys started really diving into that film yet? Yeah, I got a peek at them this morning. Um, really, really solid running back, um, good O line, good quarterback. So uh, it's definitely going to be a, a good challenge for us. How nice is it to get back in front of a Husker Nation in a, in a packed Memorial Stadium on Saturday? Yeah, without a doubt. That was uh, probably the highlight of the day, um, just being able to see that and, and missing that uh, all last year. Uh, growing up here in the state and, and, you know, always witnessing that crowd and having it gone really, really made it feel empty here. And it'll be at the anniversary of September 11th coming up on Saturday. You guys are wearing alternate uniforms. How special is this day going to be for you guys? Yeah, without a doubt. Um, you know, a ton of the kids on the team are, are including myself, are almost too young to remember um, those, the actual event uh, when it happened. But, uh, yeah, just a huge honor to be able to play for them and, uh, you know, hopefully put on a good show for them. How, much, how excited are you, though, for the alternate uniforms? You, got, you like them? Yeah, for sure. Uh, definitely one of our one of our better alternates we've had. And the helmets have been a big hit. You like the helmet too? Yeah, the old school look. Definitely, definitely liking the throwbacks. And then just uh, building off of what you guys did Saturday. I mean, how important is that to come out and, and take another step coming up this Saturday? Yeah, for sure. Um, just really trying to focus one opponent at a time, um, and you know, Buffalo is the next opponent for us. So, um, you know, taking taking them all our attention to them, all our focus to them, and you know, kind of springboarding on to the rest of the year. So, I mean, you heard it, just a few of the things that, you know, after the the first touchdown, people wanted to freak out about that a little bit. We just heard Matt Davison talk about that. But, uh, you know, Fordham probably came out, threw some things at them, and then they, they locked in and settled in, which is also good to experience and figure out how to how to respond from that. But the, the, the depth and then the, the uniforms, I, I liked. I think the guys are really excited to get to wear those uniforms. Saw that he was rocking his own logo. Last week we had Tony Tuioti on our coaches show, and he was, he was sporting the hat for – for Ben Stilley. I think it's so cool how all the coaches and players are kind of yeah. supporting uh, all of the other players uh, logos and companies and I mean how many times we've seen Adrian wearing a uh, beef jerky uh, beef jerky gear and so I think it's awesome. Yeah cool stuff good interview there with Ben he's just a really good really good guy and glad he decided to come back and and add some depth to that defensive line. We saw a bunch of them play. We had people last week wanting to know about some of the younger de defensive linemen like Nash Huttmacher. He did get into the game. The polar bear did. Played. I thought played pretty well. Saw more of Jordan Riley at the nose position this week. I thought he did a good job out there as well. Hey, Nebraska 811 says, go dig red. Before you dig, always call or click 811 to have your utility lines marked. It's free. It's easy. It's the law. We've got more sports highly coming up. It's football season. Husker Nation and Famous Dave's is here to make your tailgate, house party, or get-together famous. Award-winning and house-smoked St. Louis-style ribs, Texas beef brisket, Georgia chopped pork, and house-made sides like our Wilbur beans, creamy coleslaw, and Dave's cheesy mac and cheese will surely tackle any barbecue craving. Visit FamousDave's.com for all your catering and online ordering needs or come visit us at our locations in Lincoln and Bellevue. Shop Woodhouse Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram during the Make This the Summer event going on now. The Ram is where fine form meets rugged function, designed to be durable, functional, and stylish, giving you the dependability you need for all your work projects and the luxury you deserve to get around for everyday driving. With a full lineup of all new 1,500, 2,500, and 3,500 Rams, we're sure to have one that fits your needs. Shop our full lineup online at WoodhouseChryslerJeepDodge.com or stop out and see us for a test drive in Blair. Whether you compete on the court, at the track, on the field, or in the fields, winning isn't just a goal. It's a mindset shaped, honed, and defined throughout the season. That's why farmers pushing themselves to be the best plant DeKalb brand corn. Wherever you compete, winning has roots. Perform at your best with DeKalb. 
Always read and follow grain marketing and all other stewardship practices and pesticide label directions. Treatment for kids fighting brain cancer has not changed for over 30 years. If a child survives, they will live with the side effects from the treatments for the rest of their lives. This is Rex Burkhead. The Team Jack Foundation invests in impactful childhood brain cancer research to find better treatments and one day a cure. There's a lot of work to do to beat this disease, and we need your help. Donate today by calling 855-RUN-JACK or by visiting teamjackfoundation.org. Your help makes a difference. The game isn't just about winning or losing. It's about the snacks they share after they've used up all their energy in the field. It's the early morning practice before school and staying late after to get a couple more kicks in. It's the pride they feel for their team and the determination to always keep improving. Sure, the game isn't always about winning or losing, but when they've won the big game and celebration is in full swing, there's only one thing left for you to do. Get them home safe. Buckle up and back. Paid for by NDOT Highway Safety Office. Hey, this is Jimmy Buffett. I am so happy to be bringing my Broadway musical, Escape to Margaritaville, to you. It's got all the songs you know by heart, a few new ones, a great cast, and dancing that'll knock your flip-flops off. Get ready to set your mind on island time and get your tickets today. Fins up. At the Lead Center, September 10th through 12th. Get your tickets today at leadcenter.org. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Score a game-winning drive when you buy your next vehicle at Sid Dillon Chevrolet. As a Chevrolet Business Elite dealer, we offer commercial vehicles, including medium-duty trucks and low-cab forwards. Whatever vehicle fits your needs, we're here to make the purchase process easy. Visit our Chevy locations in Blair, Crete, Fremont, or Wahoo. Plus, shop our full inventory at SidDillonChevy.com. You are what drives us. Chevy, find new roads. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus. Insurance, employee benefits, financial services. You live in a smart home powered by Cox Internet, so you're not thinking about the pizza delivery. You're thinking how nice it is to get everyone together for a fun night. You're not thinking about the pizza, maybe just a little. Cox Home Life, show me the front porch camera. Pizza! View your Cox Home Life cameras right from your TV using your Contour voice remote. Visit cox.com slash thisishome to learn more. Advertised features require subscription to Cox Internet and Contour TV. A high-speed internet connection is required. Home Life Security Services subject to Home Life Security Service Agreement. Cox Home Life Services provided by Cox Licensed Entities. See cox.com slash licenses. You already got the hat, the jersey, maybe even the occasional red and white face paint. So kick things off right this season and add the FNBO Husker Visa debit card to the list. Pay loud and proud for every Husker decal, t-shirt, or hot dog at the game. Wear your heart on your sleeve and in your wallet with the Husker Visa debit card. Free with any checking account from FNBO, the bank of Husker Nation. Get yours today at FNBO.com slash Huskers. Member FDIC. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall at Zone 6 in Exarban Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Road townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. Here we go again. The celebrating, the accolades. Ever since we added Marco to our team, our technology can't lose. Day after day, success after success, Marco's made our business IT a force to be reckoned with. The only drawback of being technology all-stars is keeping champagne away from the electronics. <sighs> Find out what your technology could be saying at marconet.com. September is Childhood Cancer Awareness Month, and the Team Jack Foundation raises funds for childhood brain cancer research. Please consider supporting the Team Jack Foundation by texting Jack to 243-725 or visiting teamjackfoundation.com.
www.thehuskerfamilyradio.org. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you here on a Monday night following a Husker victory over the weekend and three wins over the weekend for Husker Volleyball. Kata Caffey was named today the Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week for her efforts. What an emeritus player's challenge. I mean, it started with a five-setter between Arizona State, Georgia, then Nebraska, Omaha went five sets, and then Omaha and was it ASU went five sets, and then Nebraska, Georgia was a good competitive. I mean, there were really competitive matches all weekend long. Really, there was. There was and, um, me, my, my parents, and I both went to the two on Friday, the two five sets with, uh, well, we showed up, we thought it was going to be 11 a.m., but then the first one, Arizona State and Georgia goes to five, so it yeah. pushes Nebraska's uh, time uh, start time back. But, um, yeah, Omaha, I was really impressed with them. We heard Coach Cook really bragging about them today. And Lauren Cook on, uh, West on the broadcast called them scrappy. They really were, boy. They came in there to fight, and I really was impressed with them. And a, a good test for Nebraska. And, and as Coach Cook talked about, still trying to figure things out with this team. But a great, great weekend to kind of, you know, again, figure some of those things out and, and a test moving forward that's from here on out gets tougher. They start having ranked teams. They go on the road. And uh, get, it gets tougher from here. Creighton will give them all they want Wednesday night. And then Saturday, it's Utah. They're a ranked team. And then they go to play Stanford next week. And that's one of the great volleyball programs in America. So they're definitely going to get tested. I, I, you know, I think he's, I think he's tinkering, which that's what you do right now. You tinker. You try to figure out what yep. your best lineup is. And I know I, I talked to a, a huge Husker volleyball fan over the weekend. He's like, oh, this inconsistency is driving me nuts. I'm like, but there's a method to the madness. He's trying to figure this team out, what they can and can't do, and I think it'll all kind of gel together here in a couple of weeks. Well, I think who he can call on in, in certain situations, if they need a spark, if they need uh, someone to come in and just be a, a service specialist, a service specialist, or if they need a defensive, someone to come in and stop a run, I think all these certain situations, he's trying to figure out who the go-to is for those certain situations and who plays the best together and, and uh, all of the things kind of things there's so many talent there's so much talent and so many pieces trying to figure out how all of those pieces fit and the best way moving forward still some tickets available for the match wednesday up in omaha at the chi center if you want to go see some high high caliber volleyball i think creighton's ranked what tim say 19th that's probably not high enough i think they're better than that i think that'll be in a tremendous match coach cook said today you would have voted them second well, the, what they've done so far, they've yep. played some really good teams, and they're undefeated, so they're going to give Nebraska all they want. And probably, what, 8,000 people going to be in that arena? Oh, maybe more. I think there'll be over 10. That's amazing. Be over 10 that is that incredible. Match. Yeah, so, but there are tickets still available if you want to go up there on Wednesday and watch that. Let's head to the phones. Richard in Lincoln up next. Good evening, Richard. Welcome to Sports Nightly. Thank you. Um, there was another group that you didn't mention that uh, suddenly was back at Memorial Stadium. And that was the Cornhusker Marching Band. And it was interesting to me that uh, we got to see the entire pregame show by the band, and they did a fantastic job. Uh, when a game is, is televised, it's quite often that we have nothing but talking heads commenting about the game, and we don't get to see very much of the band. So it was a refreshing change, and uh, the – Big Red Cornhusker Marching Band is back with a vengeance, and uh, that adds to the picture on game day. I agree, and, and they were they were awesome. But I will tell you that on our Facebook live stream um, before game day or before, yes. we, we show that. We show all the way up. So uh, while the TV shows and the, the TV pregame shows might not show it, Facebook Live will show the band every single home game. So – that's a cool outlet and a cool place that, you know, you can see it because it is such a big part of game day. It would be nice sometimes to get some of the halftime show, but uh, quite often with certain networks, uh, all you get is the talking heads and you get maybe a little glimpse of the band. Yeah, and for those of us who are proud band alumni, uh, it's always great to see that man down working on the field. Richard, appreciate it. Thank you very much for the phone call. They're, they're amazing. They had their alumni group with them on Saturday as well. It was great to see. And Jessica's absolutely right. That Facebook live stream before the game, you'll see it every home game. Yep, every home game. And um, we usually are going to bounce out before on road games. So you don't, you know, when the uh, home team's band on the road starts to play. But every home game, we're going to get to see that and through the tunnel walk, which is really awesome. Now, halftime does present an issue because there are broadcast rights. Right. 
with the TV network. It's something that I, and we're not allowed to do, but at least pregame, every single home game, you're going to get to see the band's performance. Yeah, now, that, those uh, in, young folks work so hard. I mean, uh, they've been out here. We, we were oh, like yeah. three weeks. Uh, the entire fall camp that the football team was out here, the, the band's been out here uh, practicing. So. They put so much into it. And Richard's right. It adds so much to the atmosphere. It's what makes college football in my eyes so great is it's, it's a huge part of it are the bands. And we didn't have them a year ago when everything was shut down because of COVID. So it's great to have them back on. And I'm sure they're going to have a, a great performance lined up for this Saturday for the no doubt. 9-11 tributes that are going to be going on throughout the stadium. So I can't wait to see what they come up with. I there. think all of it, all of the game day pageantry and festivity for Saturday is going to be incredible. I, I mean, if as unbelievable and amazing as it was this Saturday, I think it's going to be taken up a notch this coming Saturday. I, I totally agree. I think it'll be a really cool, it'll be one of those really patriotic feels to it. I think that's going to be Great, and it starts with the uniforms, and Nebraska is going to wear those alternate uniforms that are white with some camo kind of mixed in underneath it. I like the helmet, too. A lot of people kind of thinking maybe that's the helmet that Nebraska got to go with permanently, so we'll see what folks think about the helmet when they get a chance to see, uh, to see those. 402-413-2400, the number if you want to dial us up with a comment or question. Back with our final segment, including our weekend winners. That's coming up next. Stay up to date with the most current and latest news by following the Huskers on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and more. These social media homes provide the fastest daily updates on everything surrounding Nebraska athletics, including game times, results, ticket promotions, prize giveaways, and more. Log on to also follow several sport-specific pages and Husker head coaches. Join today and interact with thousands of Husker fans around the world. Visit huskers.com slash social media to see all of our accounts. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm journalism student Grace Fitzgibbon with Campus News. On May 7th and 8th, Nebraska celebrated its largest May graduating class in university history. 3,594 degrees were awarded to Nebraska graduates in ceremonies at Pinnacle Bank Arena and Memorial Stadium. Along with receiving their diplomas, graduates also heard inspiring speeches from notable Nebraskans, including legendary coach Tom Osborne. Hey, this is Jimmy Buffett. I am so happy to be bringing my Broadway musical, Escape to Margaritaville, to you. It's got all the songs you know by heart, a few new ones, a great cast, and dancing that'll knock your flip-flops off. Get ready to set your mind on island time and get your tickets today. Fins up. At the Lead Center, September 10th through 12th. Get your tickets today at leadcenter.org. Valley 365 is here, and the time is now to take your farming technology full circle. Valley 365 is the ultimate command center, the new single sign-on platform that brings together our tried and true technology and streamlines your entire operation. Combining the best features of AgSense, Valley Scheduling, Valley VRI, and Valley Insights, Valley 365 is the next-level solution for connected crop management. Leverage your data, make the most of your time, and own your tomorrow. Contact your Valley dealer today. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is the place to watch Nebraska games this season. Locally owned and operated, Addy's is Omaha's premier sports bar with four locations in Elkhorn, Maple Street, Millard, and the new flagship Capital location in downtown Omaha. If it's Husker game day, it's on at Addy's. Addy's Sports Bar and Grill is Omaha's official watch party spot with game day giveaways, prizes, fun, and more surprises later in the season. Addy's Sports Bar and Grill. See you there for the game. Treat Treatment for kids fighting brain cancer has not changed for over 30 years. If a child survives, they will live with the side effects from the treatments for the rest of their lives. This is Rex Burkhead. The Team Jack Foundation invests in impactful childhood brain cancer research to find better treatments and one day a cure. There's a lot of work to do to beat this disease, and we need your help. Donate today by calling 855-RUN-JACK or by visiting teamjackfoundation.org. Your help makes a difference. Buckle up, put that phone down. It's a reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Final segment of Sports Highly here on a Monday night. Still plenty of time if you want to be a part of the program at 402-413-2400. Mark on our text line said, Stilly coming back could be big, a player slash coach on the field for that D-line. And that's exactly right. I mean, Ben Stilly's played an awful lot of Big Ten football and played a very, very high level. 
he is kind of a coach on the field with as much experience as he has out there. Same thing for JoJo, and I think same thing for the safeties in Williams and Dismuke. Yeah, that's a big part of, I think, why this defense is so is going to be the strength of this defense because you got so many guys that sometimes you it's just they can do it themselves and yeah. figure things out on the field themselves and got a lot of beyond just that and playing a lot of football have a lot of pride in trying to help things kind of change the narrative of this one and, and a lot of guys came back to you know want to help this team win and they wanted to go out and in, in, in a different way and, and kind of change the narrative and change the story uh then and leave it better than they found it so yeah i think a lot of guys that are both talented and uh, played a lot of football experience, but also have a different kind of motivation as well. Take the phone. Let's go to Kansas City. John, you are up next here on Sports Highly. Good evening. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, I just wanted to call and um, ask a couple questions about the red carpet experience. Yes. Yeah. Um, I just thought it was uh, fantastic. I've, uh, you know, worked with that population for a number of years and just what they did for those kids and families to get them involved with uh, with an experience like that. And I know some people complained about it and weren't necessarily in favor of it, but I just, I don't see any downside to what happened this weekend at all. And I, I sure hope that they can continue that in some shape or form through, you know, the games and the seasons to come. Um, not only for football, but maybe for volleyball or some of the other events, too. It's it's how you grow your fan base, and I think it's what Nebraska is about as a state. And I just – I think it's a really cool program, and I hope it continues. Absolutely. Very well said. Uh, I, I a thousand percent, a million percent agree, and I do believe it is something that they want to continue to moving forward. We had a QR code up on the board on the big screen – on uh, Saturday and Huskers.com. I need to find that link of where we can send people because there is a place where you can go and donate to. It's something that they do want to keep go moving forward. And, and Dr. Chatter's great job with it. It was an awesome idea. And it, we saw the stories. We talked about it earlier, just how many kids were impacted by it, getting to go to their first game. And so I will get that link by tomorrow so that if uh, – you know, we have another question. I can send that out so that people can uh, know where to go to, to continue to help this thing get going uh, moving forward. And I, I think that's a great idea. Do it at other events as well. Because then you think about some of the games like basketball, baseball, softball, that maybe there isn't a sellout streak to talk about, but how we get them in the stands and, and help create that raucous atmosphere for the teams. Yeah, I, and I said this last week when, for whatever reason, it was getting criticized by people, even fans, criticizing i'm like this could be something that could just launch itself into a new tradition that we've started with this thing and i think all the positive vibes including john's call right there to what we got from that is absolutely it's something that needs to be continued moving forward i think it's just a tremendous thing and it added to all the glory of saturday yeah and and you you talk about building a, a fan, fan base and this is really every team across the country i mean it's got to start somewhere where you start the next generation. And this is a great way to do that, to start that next generation of Husker fans. Absolutely. Loved it. Thought it was great. And we'll see if it continues. We have had some people asking us tonight, is the Buffalo game sold out? We don't know. Uh, I think there were a lot fewer tickets left for that than there were for the game with Fordham on Saturday. But I'm sure as we make our way through the week, we will hear more about uh, where that stands going into uh, Saturday's 2.30 kickoff. Finally, a 2.30 game. Get away from the 11 o'clock for a week. I'm okay with that. I like 2.30 games. You know, players, I talked to Brendan Stye about this. Players prefer the 11 a.m. games because they don't like sitting around in the Get hotel all day. Uh, I mean, it's special playing underneath the lights, but 11 a.m. is definitely the preference for, for the majority of players. I personally like the 2.30 games because it's kind of in the middle where it's, you, it's not so early, but you get done in the middle of the day and still have uh, some time at night to uh, have have the rest of the Saturday night. I think it's, yeah, I mean, for a lot of us who grew up with college football and a lot of one, one thirty kickoffs, this is as close as we get now with the 2.30 game. And, and then, hey, there'll be some really good night games lined up for us as well. You know, uh, people were kind of saying, oh, you know, Fordham's an FCS school. Do you see how many FCS teams beat FBS teams over the weekend? Four or five of them got big I, wins. I saw someone put out a tweet about that there's a lot of, you know, if people want to gripe about uh, Fordham scoring a touchdown, there's a lot of teams that would uh, gladly switch places with the 52-7 to score uh, on top. 
because there were, what, four teams that went down by FCS schools? Yeah, I'm looking at that right now. Um, I know that Montana had the big one. They knocked off Washington, so they beat a ranked team there. South Dakota State, who is serious, they made the FCS, FCS championship game in May. They went and whipped Colorado State out in Fort Collins. UNLV got tripped up by um, Eastern Washington, who's another really good FCS program. So, yeah, there were a handful of them over the weekend, and you just – Kansas just slipped by South Dakota and got kind of a bit of a break late in that game to, to hang on and win. So, yeah, there were a handful of them. Wyoming barely escaped an upset bid from Montana State. So, yeah, Iowa State had all they yeah. can handle with Northern Iowa, 16-10. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you, you can run into these FCS programs and look out because it, be it can be a chore to, to get a victory over. I mean, we saw some really good football players from Fordham on Saturday. That linebacker, 30 tackles? Are you kidding me? Yeah, and got a lot of respect and admiration from the Husker players. I mean, Should. Murphy Stepp was going on and on about how uh, incredible that he played. Amazing stuff. All right, time for our weekend winners. What do you, what do you have? What, what caught your eye? College football fans. <laughs> yeah. What a weekend from really start to finish. How many great games we saw. And then in the top 25, what, five, four or five upsets? I think it was five. Four. That I, sounds right. I think there is five. Five top 25 teams uh, go down and close games. They had the overtime win last night and just lots of great football. And again, getting back to normal. It was so hard last year. We had football, but it, it just wasn't the same. And, you know, teams didn't get the off season and, and just the the great games, the, the atmospheres that were back, the, I mean, you, I know we don't love Wisconsin around here, but the jump around was back. I mean, all of these great traditions, uh, the tunnel walk, my first time getting an experience that, and then just when you were not at the stadium watching your team, when you got to go home and watch some great football. So college football fans, my weekend winner. Huge. I mean, just that Clemson, Georgia game, I know it didn't have a lot of points, but I like sometimes those games as opposed to a 52-45 to 45 shootout where nobody can stop anybody. There was some great defense played in that game. That was a terrific game. UCLA, look out for UCLA. They are playing some great football. They took down LSU. The Pac-12 certainly needed that win, so I'm with you on that. I did find another FCS upset. East Tennessee State beat Vanderbilt 23-3. to three. So that's so four or five. One. I think that's up to five now. Yeah, so I think I'm thinking it might have been five FCS wins and four top 25. I think that's what I, I had that's counted what, them before, yep. but uh, I couldn't remember which number was which. It's five and four, but yep. that, that's a lot of like great games, upsets. Absolutely, that everybody loves the upset. Right? And there'll be more upsets this weekend. Mark my word, those, those will happen. My weekend winner, I'm going Patrick Cantlay. I love golf. Patrick Cantlay won, wins the FedEx Cup, 15 million dollars, big time. He and John Rom kind of had like a duel all both Saturday and Sunday. It was great golf. I love when it comes down. I don't like it when you go into Sunday and the winner is just so far ahead. And those two are right there, though, yeah. the whole time. I like it when it's a battle. I really like playoff golf. but um, they, it, Those two kind of ran away with it. They had yep. a big lead over who was third in that. And Kevin Na or somebody finished third. But Patrick Cantlay, <laughs> good dude, now the FedEx champion. How about this? Crypto said, Jessica, my winner is your Georgia pick. Which you, you picked Georgia as well and Jeremiah. We but my it. big winner was the Penn State win. The boys Penn State back pick. here did not pick Georgia <laughs> to win. The boys back here had it. Andrew and, and Tim had a tough weekend. We'll review that <laughs> later in the week when we do our picks. But, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, good stuff. It'll be fun. Game day is going to Ames this week. They're going to go see the Iowa State. The Cyhawk game. That's going to be a great game. It'll be a great game. Iowa looked great against it. And Iowa State Indiana. did not. Did they hold it back? I don't know. Sandbagging a little bit week one? I don't know. We'll see. Almost caught up to him. Going to be fun. All right. Uh, great show tonight. Tomorrow, uh, we, we'll hear from the coordinators. Eric Janander, Matt Lubick will talk. We're hoping to maybe talk to Will Bolt. Fall ball begins tomorrow for Will Bolt's baseball guys. They start fall practice coming off their tremendous run in the NCAA tournament last June. And we'll also talk a little Husker volleyball. So big night tomorrow night as well. Come on back. Enjoy the rest of the night. Thanks to Jessica, Tim, Andrew, and Mike. Have a good night. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Whew. Sometimes being an office printer feels like I'm competing in an Olympic sport. Thankfully, I have Marco's managed print services on my team. Marco's game plan helps me make big plays while saving big 